Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. So since internship, this question used to run in my mind. First is the basic IV fluids, how to give, what fluids to give and at what rate each fluid should be given at each uh, special conditions. So this we will be learning in detail in this lecture today. Let's go on. Yeah. So first basic concept you should know is osmolarity. So if you take the total body water, the solutes are dispersed in it like sodium, glucose, urea, nitrogen, all these. So this concentration in one kg of water is osmolarity. So it is given by the formula 2 into sodium plus bun by 2.8 blood urea nitrogen plus glucose by 18. So in this formula you can clearly tell the plasma osmolality is mainly dependent on sodium. Next will be bun, next will be glucose. Normal plasma osmolality will be 285 to 290 milliosmoles per kg of water. Okay, so what? how does this help in IV fluids? So first you should know one more basic concept which is the tonicity. Tonicity means how water moves from one compartment to the other compartment. What is determining it? That is tonicity. So here if you see the osmoles which I told sodium, glucose, bun, these are like cheese and water is like jerry which runs behind the cheese always okay so if you see wherever the solutes concentration is more water will be running behind it whatever the compartment whether it's intracellular compartment or it's extracellular compartment water will be running where there is cheese that is the osmoles so next if you see the total body water it can be divided into two-third which will be the intracellular compartment and one-third which will be the extracellular compartment. Total body water is 60% of total body weight. So in that extracellular compartment can be divided into four-fifth which will be the interstitial compartment and only one-fifth which will be contributing to the plasma. So movement of water and solutes among uh, I see. So, movement of water between ICF and interstitial compartment is det det determined by tonicity, the story of rat and cheese. And the movement of fluids between interstitial compartment and plasma is determined by our Starling's forces. So, daily if you see, excretion happens. So daily if you see, some amount of fluid is always lost from the body, insensible fluid loss, like some amount of 500 ml is lost through sweat, 400 ml is lost through respiration and 100 ml is lost through GI losses. So total 1 liter of fluid is lost daily. Next. And when by the food we take and by normal oxidation process which is happening, there is 300 ml fluid is added to the body. So if you see daily, we are losing 700 ml fluid from our body. So this helps in, so with, so with this we can know that daily in addition to urine output of an individual, we should give extra 700 ml to meet the insensible fluid losses. So whenever you are putting fluids, you should add 700 ml to its urine output to meet this insensible fluid loss. Yeah. Next, how to classify IV fluids? Determined on tonicity. So first, if the fluids osmolarity concentration. If it is less than the plasma osmolarity, they are hypotonic fluids. And if it is similar to plasma osmolarity, isotonic fluids. And if it's excess than os plasma osmolarity, hypertonic fluids. 
so we will see isotonic fluids first yeah the first isotonic fluid which is the rl ringer lactate so if you see the composition sodium it will be 130 in ecf normal composition of sodium will be 136 to 140 next if you take potassium it is 4 it is exactly similar to serum potassium chloride if you see that will also simulate ecf chloride and lactate we have 28 and calcium we have 3 so this seems to be similar to the composition of plasma so only they tell it as ringer lactate as the most physiological fluid so only we prefer rl in case of post operative patients fractures all those things okay next so now how to remember what are the uses of rl by its composition first it contains sodium you're putting this rl in the extracellular compartment by giving it through the iv cannula so this cheeses are introduced into the circulation so this will drag lots of water from the intracellular compartment leading to increased extracellular fluid volume meaning if you want to enhance the volume of volume status of the patient rl is the best fluid of choice so in hypovolemic shocks okay or post-op patient burns patient burns where hypovolemia is happening all this rl is preferred next what is the next component lactate lactate usually gets converted in the liver into bicarbonate so in case of diarrhea if you see secretory diarrhea where the patient will be losing lots of bicarbonate potassium in stools there if you give rl it is the most physiological fluid and also the acidosis created by the loss of bicarb will be replaced by the bicarbon rl okay then contraindications in some liver disease this lactate to bicarb conversion is stopped which means lactate accumulates resulting in lactic acidosis so check the liver status of the patient before giving rl At the same time if the patient is having congestive cardiac failure already is volume overloaded there is no role you to give fluids but still if there is a situation then you should never prefer rl because in congestive cardiac failure already the patient will be having a degree of lactic acidosis due to inadequate perfusion okay so here it will aggravate that so never give next is vomiting so vomiting all right so in vomiting HCl is lost excessively from the body metabolic alkalosis prevails so if you give this rl more alkali is further loaded into the body this will just exaggerate as alkalosis alkalotic states okay so never give rl vomiting next last is addison's disease next is calcium in rigor lactate so if you see whenever you are transfusing blood it will they will be having edta in that blood uh, packets because the blood should not coagulate so this edta will bind with the calcium in rl so what will happen the anticoagulant effect will be lost in the blood uh, transfusion so easily they can form clots blood transfusion will be blocked so whenever a patient is transfused make sure that is not transfused with rl in the same line okay that will form clots at the same time if you give rl with some other drugs it can inactivate this calcium will inactivate certain drugs in rl like amphotericin b should never given rl so that describes the uses as well as contraindication of ringer lactate next is our isotonic fluid which is normal saline 0.9 percent everyone would have heard of it so it contains 154 milliequivalents of sodium and 154 milliequivalents of chloride in it so where can be used same thing it also has sodium meaning cheese osmols so 
it will drag water from the icf intracellular compartment and expand the extracellular compartment volume expansion severe hypovolemia you can use ns also next where can also be used a fluid deficit state which is a diabetic ketoacidosis where lots of fluid will be needed so to expand this ecf volume we can use ns in dk next is excessive perspiration or any hypovolemic hyponatremia okay next we will see the next ion in ns which is the chloride what happens is if you give ns to a patient this chloride will be filtered by the kidney and when it goes to the distal tubule near the collecting duct there will be beta intercalated cells this chloride gets reabsorbed in exchange for a bicarb ion into the urine meaning chloride is exchanged in place of bicarb so hcl is reabsorbed and bicarbonate is lost so, ns infusion or giving ns creates a state of acidosis so now think when a patient is experiencing vomiting he is losing lots of acids hcl is lost so to replace it you will give ns and not rl never rl okay at the same time in diarrhea also sometimes we will give ns just to replenish the volume state that's all and also ns can be given as a fluid challenge meaning 500 ml to 1000 ml of ns can be given in 30 to 60 minutes and looked for urine output if urine output increases after giving fluids which means pre renal aki can be diagnosed so there also ns plays a role contraindications contraindications are nothing but since they drag extra volume into the ecf compartment it shouldn't be given in overloaded states already ecf overloaded states like congestive cardiac failure liver failure ckd kidney failure all these features are contraindicated and also in malignant hypertension where already bp is increased there should be giving with caution next is hypotonic fluids 5% dextrose so it has less osmolarity than the plasma so what happens is if you give this d5 it has very less osmols than the icf icf has lots of osmols lots of cheese now when you give this so what will happen to water jerry it will run towards the cheese osmols so cells will be loaded with water and cells will expand in case of cns system that will result in cerebral edema increased icp so this d5 solutions are contraindicated in any intracranial pathologies or any neurosurgical procedures in any acute ischemic stroke where you are suspecting some already cerebral edema is happening you no need to expand the edema more by giving this hypotonic solutions okay so all these are the contraindications next if you see its uses in hypernatremia what happens sodium is increased in the ecf compartment cheese is excess in the ecf compartment so water will be dragged from the icf into the ecf causing ecf expansion ecf expansion and intracellular dehydration okay so here what you should do is you should decrease the osmolarity of the ecf so only we give hypotonic fluids like d5 in case of hypernatremia so if you give hypotonic fluids and decrease the osmolarity of the ecf at one point of time icf osmolarity will become more so the cheese is here jerry will run from ecf to the icf the cells are rehydrated now okay so this is the concept of giving d5 in case of hypernatremia the life saver next we come to hypertonic fluids 
First is DNS, dextrose 5% with normal saline 0.9%. So if you see actually the osmolarity will be 586, higher than the plasma osmolarity. But if you give DNS, what happens is dextrose will be taken up by the RBCs and only NS will remain. So it will behave as isoosmotic fluids only when it is given. So what is the use? Same thing, similar to NS only. It has dextrose extra, so it supplies energy. As well as NS it has, so any vomiting, nasogastric suctioning, if the patient is continuous nasogastric suctioning is going on, or simply it can be used as a maintenance fluids in case of unconscious patients where lots of fluids to be given daily. Okay, yes. Uh, contraindications of for NS will hold for contraindications of DNS. Next, 3% NS, hypertonic saline. See, indication will be acute symptomatic severe hyponatremia or any acute hyponatremia in case of any uh, intracranial pathologies. Contraindications are should never given hypolemic hyponatremia hypolemic hyponatremia or factitious or pseudo hyponatremia first you should rule out all these things then only you should start thinking of giving 3% ns yes so that's it we have combined all the fluids like isotonic rl ns and hypotonic d5 hypertonic 3% ns dns all these we have learnt in a conceptual way of how to give and when to give Okay, so we will just have a brief outlook of what and all we have seen. So fluid of choice. First, vomiting, NS. Diarrhea, RL. Diabetic ketoacidosis, first initiation by NS 0.9% followed by 0.45%. Half normal saline will be given. Next, fluid challenge in prenatal AKA, NS. Hypercalcemia should give NS to dilute, it should cause dilution of blood. So we will be giving NS. Next, hypernatremia and diabetes insipidus should give D5. Acute pancreatitis, we should be giving the most physiological fluid which is the RL. Next, hyperkalemia should treat by giving insulin in D25. Next, acute symptomatic hyponatremia, severe hyponatremia, 3% NS. That's it. So, we have learnt all these of whys, whens, how to give and what are the uses of all these fluids in this lecture. If you like this video, do subscribe to our channel and the notes for the same video will be available in our WhatsApp as well as Telegram groups. All the best wishes. Thank you.